Hey, it's Joe at Red's Fly Shop here. I'm gonna do a spay fishing for steelhead gear dump um, and try to make this brief. In the video description, there's a link to my blog article where I'll possibly elaborate a little bit more, but you can get direct links to any of the gear I'm talking about and maybe gain a better understanding of, of what it is. So I'm using two rods uh, on this trip. Uh, we we're using a boat to get from spot to spot. So when I jumped out here, I was able to grab uh, my heavier rod and my lighter rod. Um, my lighter rod is uh, a 12 foot seven weight Sage X, wonderful little rod, great for Skagit style casting. It's important uh, if you're gonna go steelhead fishing for a week and you have the ability to bring two rods, it's really nice to have a light setup and a heavy setup so that you're not switching heads or tips. Um, just makes much better use of your time. So let me go through my light setup first and, uh, and tell you why I have uh, it set up the way I do and uh, just share my gear with you. So 12 foot seven weight Sage X. Great for Skagit style casting and shorter heads. Um, this blue shooting head right here is a Skagit Max launch. It's a traditional 23 foot Skagit head. Great utility line. I can do a little bit of everything with it. It's wonderful. I love that setup. Um, Skagit heads are the most common head style that you're gonna use. I'm keeping a Skagit Max launch or a traditional floating Skagit head on my light rod. Uh, on my heavy rod, however, I have a 13 foot eight weight Sage X. And on that, I have a 4D Skagit uh, game changer. So the, a big portion of the shooting head either sinks at an intermediate rate or a heavy rate. And that allows me to really swing my fly slowly under a lot of the fast currents, not just all out deeper, but just a slower presentation that gets my line under all of the chop and boils and swirls along the surface. So my heavy rod tends to carry that head most of the time uh, with a piece of uh, uh, 10 feet of T11 or T14 sometimes. And uh, I just happen to have a black string leech on that. And then uh, I can most often fish an unweighted fly when I'm fishing my heavy rod, which is really nice so that that fly flutters and undulates. So there's my heavy rod. Um, as far as just rod selection in general goes, uh, it's nice to be able to have two top end rods. I think people should invest in two handed rods that they're gonna love throwing thousands upon thousands of casts in a given week of fishing. Uh, uh, I myself, I'm on the last of five days and I gotta admit, uh, fatigue is real. You wanna make sure that your setups are easy to cast, well balanced, and you have proper technique so you don't burn out. Um, that could really happen. Okay, so we talked a little bit about heads. I think somebody needs to have a sinking Skagit head that can be a Skagit uh, game changer style, a floating Skagit head for most of their utility work. Uh, and in here, I've got a couple of extra Skagit heads, but I also have a Scandinavian style head as well. Uh, just to touch on that real quickly, let's just say, for instance, you invest nearly $1,000 in one of these Sage X rods here. Spend an extra 50 or 100 bucks uh, and get several heads because I can make one rod have it be capable of many different things. Um, there's lots of videos on Skagit versus Scandi, etc. But a Scandinavian style head being longer, uh, the way it unfurls and casts is much more efficient for lighter, smaller flies because I don't have to strip up as much line. So I can just make my cast, send it out, just the head much of the time with a long leader on the end and I can get a nice swing and I don't have to strip my line and mess around. I can take my couple steps down and send it again and I can get through a run very quickly with a Scandi head as long as I'm not throwing big flies. So I'm not gonna talk a lot about flies uh, in this video. I'll put links to a few of my favorites, but uh, maybe I'm just fishing, it's clear water and I can fish just traditional spay flies. I can fish so much faster and more effectively with a Scandinavian style head if I'm using um, skating flies or traditional spay flies that are sparse to tide. So Scandinavian style fishing can be way more efficient. So I think somebody should have a few different heads. When it comes to sink tips uh, on your Skagit heads, which is what you'll probably spend most of your time fishing, I found it very important on this trip to have both Mo style tips. Um, so just to, just to explain, a Skagit style head requires the use of some type of tip that's looped on here. A Mo style tip uh, is best described as one that's partial floating, partial sinking. So this one has two and a half feet of sink tip, but in order for the whole line to cast correctly, it needs to be 10 feet long. 
Now, where the mow is an advantage is if, um, if I have 10 feet of sinking tip, I don't have as much control to steer my fly around rocks or hang my fly over ledges. So some of you are thinking, well, I just like to use, maybe historically have used 10 or 15 feet of slow sinking line. Well, that can work in nice big wide open pools, but where, I, where I'm fishing a lot, I need to hang my fly in, in behind individual boulders. I need to be able to mend and steer and, and direct my fly. And having a variety of mow style tips is really important. Um, in addition for bigger, more open runs where I need to have a long level presentation, uh, I need to have uh, sink tips that are either 10 to 12 and a half or even 15 feet uh, that are pure sinking for some of the more open water. So make sure you have a variety of sink tips. Both have come in very handy uh, in certain runs. And changing a shooting head or changing a sink tip takes it should take you less than five minutes. If it took you five minutes, that'd be, that'd be taking too long. Uh, in addition for your Scandinavian style lines, you need to have a variety of sinking leaders. That's a very efficient way to cast and fish that a lot of people that are in that novice to intermediate range haven't discovered how effective Scandinavian style casting can be. So I would encourage you to do a little bit more research on that and maybe practice a little bit before you, you get out and go. As far as tippet goes, I, I love the Rio um, salmon steelhead uh, tippet. Uh, there's lots of different options. Maxima is kind of the, the old guide standby, but uh, I like how these store. I like the rubber bands. I find it to be incredibly strong. In this glacial colored water like you see behind me here, I use 20 pound test. Uh, the fish aren't leader shy. Uh, 16 is fine. 12 is about as light as I'll ever go uh, on the Rio stuff. So. Um, that's my gear dump uh, for spay fishing. Like I said, check out the blog article. Oh, one more thing I didn't touch on is just my setup in general. Um, having reels that are spay specific, like that sage spay reel um, right there, the balance in the weight of those reels after a long week of fishing is really critical. I tend to swing with the tip of my rod up so that I can direct and bend and steer. And the weight of those sage spay reels is a really nice balance on rods that are say 13 to 14 feet and I don't have to fight to hold the tip up. My right hand from holding that rod tip up the first few days was, and I was using a little bit lighter reel. Um, I was using this one uh, right here and it's a little bit more difficult to hold the tip up. So I like a space specific reel. It's a full frame design so that you don't have issues with any monofilament type running line pulling through, uh, pulling between the reel and the spool that is. Uh, the other reel I have is a Sage Spectrum Max. Uh, this is a fa fantastic reel for somebody who wants a reel that they're going to split their time between saltwater and freshwater. Spectrum Max, it's built with tight enough tolerances. I've only experienced pull through even with really fine mono once this whole trip. So uh, a good reel if you're looking for something quality to put on your spay uh, that is also going to be used in saltwater on your single handed rod. I think that's a wise way to invest for somebody who wants to get the most uh, the most bang for their buck. Um, I'll just touch on flies real quick. There are thousands upon thousands of different flies you can fish. I'll link some through in the video description. Uh, but I think having, uh, I'll give a shout out to my mom on this video. She bought me this, uh, this uh, spay fly wallet at a farmer's market in Portland about 10 years ago. And uh, this is one of the first times I've actually used it. <laughs> uh, but uh, having a, having a fly box or a wallet um, that fits in your pocket that has and this one does fit in my waiter pocket but you have enough variety to change colors or change weights uh, a lot of these little runs that we've been fishing it's really easy to walk through at first with maybe uh, an unweighted fly before uh, the boat comes back to pick you up or you decide to move you can run back up to the top reach in your box, put a weighted fly on real quick and walk back through. So um, sometimes that's easier than changing out sink tips. But uh, that's my geared up. Hope you learned something. Check out our blog. Uh, as always, you can find all this stuff uh, at redsflyfishing.com. We hope to, hope to get your order uh, before your next bay fishing trip.